Hi, my name is Tom Haddigan. I'm the author and creator of a new YouTube channel dedicated to mixed martial arts and to boxing. Today I'm looking at the prospective matchup between Drikas Duplessis, who's the current UFC middleweight champion, and the fast rising star Kamzat Chemaev. We know that Kamzat Chemaev has recently been victorious over um, Robert Whittaker, one of uh, Drikas Duplessis' earlier victims. So let's have a look at the prospective challenger, Kamzat Chemaev. Another picture of Kamzat. Now he has um, an interesting record. Um, let's just look at his UFC victories. Okay, he's, he had one, two, three, four, five, um, six victories, including a quite uh, stunning victory over Gilbert Burns. I say stunning because Gilbert Burns is an extremely durable athlete and he was, um, Kamayev wasn't able to finish him quickly, early, and he got a decision victory, but um, Burns would create problems for anyone. Some of these earlier UFC fights were quite stunning. Many of them won performance of the night. In fact, his first four won performance of the night versus John Phillips, Reese McKee, Mearshart, and Jing Liang. Of course, he picked physically picked up Jing Liang and moved him from one side of the octagon to the other to demonstrate his prowess to Dana White, who was in the front row of the audience. Now, having uh, dispatched Gilbert Burns, he then walked through Kevin Holland, and then he faced his first great test. He had to square up against the ex-world champion, um, Kamara Usman. Kamara Usman was called into the fight only on two weeks, advance warning, so it's not necessarily a fair fight in terms of preparation, but um, Kamayev was victorious on a decision majority, which earned him a, a shot at Robert Whittaker. And many felt that Whittaker had good chances against Kamayev, but it, it turned out that he was uh, instantly dispatched during round one. Um, many senses, Robert Whittaker was never actually in the fight at all. Now, this is Chemayev as a 14 0. Um, MMA UFC practitioner. What's not known is that he actually has a 24-0 wrestling record. Um, he has had many senior freestyle matches and many, you know, admirable victories. I mean, this victory against Jack Hermanson is quite stunning. And many of these others are notable in the world of freestyle wrestling. So we have a complete athlete, 24-0 in, in senior freestyle matches. He's a great grappler, wrestler, and 14-0 in mixed martial arts. Now, this is a picture of Kamayev on the right, Robert Whittaker on the left. Of course, Robert Whittaker was the ex-world champion. This is a picture of uh, Kamayev on the left uh, against uh, Usman on the right. Of course, Usman was the long-time, long-term uh, UFC middleweight champion. So we've looked at these strengths before, but let's look again. Um, Kamayev has a very strong striking game, significant knockout power. He is an exceptional wrestler and grappler. Um, he's as good a wrestler and grappler as Khabib is, that's saying something. He has competed both as a welterweight and a middleweight. Sometimes he doesn't get the, the, the weight reduction as well as it should be done. He doesn't do it as well as it should be done, but he has competed in both divisions. He has a very aggressive fighting style. This is an idiosyncratic fighting style. He has the most overwhelmingly relentless pace and pressure when he starts round one. Now, such, since he's such an extraordinarily good wrestler and grappler, he has developed a whole set of submission techniques to complement his grappling. When he gets the opponent on the ground, he knows how to create these leverages that are very successful. Weaknesses, well, we know he has cardio issues. I think in Burns, in the match against Burns, he faded a little bit. He has shown signs of struggling with his endurance in longer fights. That can be a disadvantage against well-conditioned opponents. He has limited experience. He's had one challenging match against Burns, uh, another high-level match against Usman, and a high-level match against Whitaker. But that's not a great deal of experience in terms of MMA. And he's also had some health issues. Um, he tends to train too hard, and he also had a long-term 
um, lingering effect from a COVID infection. Now, what can we say about him? Well, he's for many years, he was based in Stockholm, Sweden. He was um, a member of the famous gym in Stockholm, which featured Alexander Gustafsson and uh, Ilya Latifi, and he was trained by Riza Madadi. So the name of the gym is the All-Star Training Center. I think he's now based in, <coughs> excuse me, Dubai. Oh, what can we say about Kamayev? Okay. He often employs his freestyle wrestling to take opponents to the ground. Once he has top control, he uses these um, idiosyncratic techniques to dominate land heavy ground and pound and seek submissions. His grappling style is frequently compared to Khabib's due to the similarities like the handcuff lock and looking hooking the legs, which he did against Whitaker. In striking, Kamayev landed an impressive 1-9-2-2 in his first two UFC bouts. Beyond grappling, Kamayev also utilizes very substantial striking skills, though are relatively unknown and untested. His striking features heavy knockout power from an orthodox stance, basic boxing, and mixing up kicks. He uses his wrestling to set up strikes by feinting different takedowns and vice versa. This strategy enabled Kamayev to knock out UFC veteran Gerald Mearshart in 16, 17 seconds with a single punch. Now, this is the current world middleweight champion, uh, Drikus Duplessis. He hails from South Africa. This is a picture of him winning the world title when he defeated Sean Strickland on a very narrow margin, I think 32 points out of 24, or 32, 13 judges out of 24 commentators gave him the victory. This was uh, UFC 297, where Drikus Duplessis defeated Sean Strickland on a in the eyes of many judges, a very narrow margin. He then went on to defend his title by beating um, the previous world champion before Strickland, Israel Adesanya. Now that's a surprise to many. Uh, many people think that Israel is still the, the, the best middleweight um, MMA artist, but it may well be that we're misjudging Drikas. Now let's look at Drikas's, um record. Okay, in the UFC, he had his uh, 17th fight in the UFC and uh, he beat Marcus Perez, a good MMA practitioner. Next fight, he beat Gillis or Giles. Next fight, he beat Tavares. Then he beat Taron Dill, who had a meteoric rise and then just fizzled disappointingly. He then beat Derek Brunson, a good MMA practitioner. And then he got on to beating the ex-world champions. He then beat Robert Whittaker. He then beat Sean Strickland. He then beat... Israel Adesanya. So what can we say? Duplessis is a talented mixed martial artist known for his strengths such as powerful striking, grappling skills and resilience. However, he also faces weaknesses including inconsistencies in fight strategy and potential vulnerabilities in the stamina during the longer bouts. So we can say he has powerful striking. It's a very significant asset for Duplessis. Um, his grappling skills are very advanced. They complement his striking. He has a proven ability to withstand adversity, commendably so. He does tend to rely too heavy on his striking, neglecting strategic adjustments. And actually, his style of striking and moving his body is not very, very um, engaging. He looks a bit clumsy. I mean, obviously it works because he's won so many times, but it doesn't look that effective as it really is. He does have issues with stamina uh, during the longer bout, boats, bouts, uh, and he does focus on, he needs to focus on strategy and endurance. That will, you know, extend his longevity uh, as a world champion. As an established star in MMA, Drikas has the potential to achieve even greater success.